My friend Nick is a pro bike mechanic with over 20 years of experience. In today's episode, he's going to go through 13 things that you should never do to your bike. Spraying G35 or any kind of oil, WD-40, lubrication on your brakes while cleaning your bike or lubricating it. Yes, it'll make you go a lot faster. That's only because your brakes won't work anymore. It also sound really horrible. You can get rid of your bell, just don't do it. Brake pads are porous, they absorb oils. You can try and burn them, blow torch them, it'll not fix it. Just, just don't do it. If you want to clean your brakes, disc brake cleaner or alcohol. Not the ones you drink, isopropyl alcohol, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but just yeah. And then if all fails, just don't touch your brakes. Leave them alone, clean the rest of your bike. Yeah. Modern bikes made out of carbon fiber are fragile. If you over torque it, meaning using too much power while tightening a bolt, you can damage, you can crack a frame, uh, you can strip a bolt. Get yourself a good quality, reputable torque range, and obviously don't use one that's 40 years old because they will go out with time. This will give you an indication where you get to the desired torque to let you know that obviously you need to stop, they don't go any further. For instance, this one we use makes a beeping noise when you get to whatever the, the torque setting is. Even if you think you know what you're doing, use a torque wrench. Don't add more oil onto your chain, cassette or drivetrain or lube your bike without cleaning it first. You, all you're doing is covering the dirt with more oil. It'll cake up, cause more of a grinding pace, it'll turn into a glue and it's just gonna destroy your bike and you're spending more money on new chains and cassettes. Clean them. If you've got nothing, you can use dishwashing up liquid. Um, it's not ideal, but it'll decrease your chain and cassette if you've got nothing else. We use a Fenix foaming chain cleaner. Spray it on, that works into a thing, and then we just use a brush, and it comes straight off. This stuff's really good, but obviously there are other products to use. Degrease your chain before relubing it. Tastes good as well. Did you know you can use washing up liquid as chain lube? Don't always believe your mates. Just because he says it's really easy and just twisting a little barrel to set your gears, doesn't mean it's gonna be that easy for you. Loads of things could be wrong with your bike. Make sure whoever's giving you advice knows what they're talking about. And this goes for everything, not just bike repairs, on what kit to ride. If somebody tells you this pedal's better than another one, make sure they've ridden other pedals and not just the one. Um, if they tell you this is how you set the gears, how do they know? If your mate tells you your Shimano group set can take a certain ratio, but Shimano says it can't, trust Shimano. Always use a good quality multi-tool or any tool on a bike. If you're using a cheap Allen key you got with your furniture purchase or something that you've bought online, just be careful. If the Allen key is not the right size, you stick it in or it doesn't go in all the way, it's just gonna round. When it's rounded, you're in a world of trouble. Uh, on some cases, the bolt will have to be drilled out. This could cost you an absolute fortune. Just be careful. Don't be using brute strength on things on the bike unless you know what you're doing. Most importantly, wash your drivetrain. I'm not bothered if you don't wash your tires, or your saddle, or your handlebar tape, but wash your drivetrain. It moves around, it's covered in oil, it picks up dirt, because if you leave it dirty, it's just gonna cake up, it's gonna cause you drama, it's gonna cost you a fortune. Hosing down isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. So yeah, if you're just gonna do that, do it at least, but just don't just leave it dirty. Especially in England, if you ride in the winter when they salt the roads, that's just gonna destroy your bike. Oh, thank God I'm Welsh. Not adjusting your headset correctly. Like I say, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. Without getting too deep into it, you can't just loosen the two bolts and tighten the top one continuously and think that's gonna fix it. You need to actually see if it's developing play, if your steering bung's slipping, quite a few things could be causing your headset to have play. Uh, barriers could be worn out. Just, if you don't know what you're doing, rather take it somewhere to somebody that knows how to fix it or to diagnose it or to adjust it. Um, it's very dangerous to ride with a loose headset on a bike. Another bike wash one is not lubing your bike after you've washed it. If you've cleaned it, it's completely dried, you need to put some lubrication on it. Otherwise, if you see it, saw it somewhere humid, like in your shed or in any kind of warm, wet conditions, it's just gonna rust up. So in that case, if you're in a hurry, G35 will work, obviously not on your brakes, but on everything else. Uh, oil your chain if you can, and you're just gonna have a much happier, nicer bike. Not pumping your tires before every ride. Different inner tubes, tubeless setups, latex tubes are porous. Over time, your tires lose pressure. The main cause for getting punctures is 
tire pressure being wrong. Or you ride, you don't know that you lost loads of pressure, you hit a, a cat tire in the road or a curb, there goes your wheel. Just always, before every single ride, check your tire pressures. Pump them up, make sure they're the right pressure for you, depending on what it is, what kind of conditions you're gonna be riding in, but always make sure you check your tire pressure before you ride. Way to check your tire pressure is either with a digital or analog tire pressure gauge, or just stick your track pump on it. Pump once and that'll give you a tire pressure. Obviously don't use a hand pump because generally speaking they don't give you tire pressures. Using GT85 as a chain loop or WD40 or any PTFE coating. Yes, it says lubricants on it but it's not good enough to lube a chain. If you're riding in a velodrome indoors in dry conditions you could probably get away with it. But you need something to coat between the links that's going to stop your chain from damaging so just use chain lube. If you wanted to you can wax your chain. Fenix all conditions lubes that we use. Morgan Blue makes a good oil. Pro Gold is a really good one. There's quite a few out there. Just use something that's, that works well. If you've had a puncture on the road or anywhere you've got a flat tire, before you just stick a new inner tube in and try and ride off in a hurry, take the time, feel the inside of the tire, visually check the outside of the tire and make sure you find the piece of glass or the thorn or whatever has caused it. Look at your inner tube even to see if it's got a snake bite because that could just be due to too low pressure. Um, but check that. Those two minutes that it takes longer to do that might save you stopping a mile down the road again and having to put another inner tube in. Always check what's caused it before. That might explain why I once had eight punctures on one ride. Probably from the same piece of glass. Don't lean your bike drive side down or don't stick something on it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a guy, had his bike serviced in here, everything was working fine, stuck it in the back of his car, put his suitcase on top of the rear mech, bent the hanger and the gears didn't work when he got where he was going. Uh, protect this. If that bends or this moves, because it sticks out, your gears won't work. You even have the risk of if you bent it too far that your chain can drop behind the cassette, rip your spokes out. I've seen guys frames ripped apart. If you do lean it on there, Mech hangers are made quite soft. They're made to bend because it protects your frame and it protects your rear derailleur. But if it does bend, there's no way to set your gears or to use a bike until you stick it back in the bike shop or if you've got a mech hanging adjustment tool to go onto the hanger to straighten it all out. But obviously if that's skew, it just won't work. The one exception is Tram Eagle where it automatically disengages when it gets an impact. Magic. Riding your bike without checking if your quick release skewers or your through axles are tight. I see this all the time, so it's loose, you ride, you're just wearing everything out. You're damaging your wheel, you're damaging your frame, but also, if it's a quick release, there's a risk that it comes out completely and your wheel falls off while you ride and you die. With through axles, they need to be in quite tight, just because if they're loose, actually just by riding the bike you could unspin them and loosen them off. A general rule of thumb for through axles is usually about 8 to 10 newton meters but obviously check with your bike manufacturer. With a quick release skewer you want to push this in with your thumb that leaves a white mark. Tight enough that you have to use more than two fingers to loosen off but obviously not uh, too tight that you can't get it loose again. Uh, if you can loosen it with one finger it's not tight enough. So those are things you shouldn't be doing with your bike. Subscribe if you want some more tips from this guy. Lunatic. I suppose they're lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> this lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this? Where did we script these?